Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, we're gonna talk about planned pooling. That's right, we are gonna use a variegated yarn and purposefully make the colors of that yarn pool in pattern so that way we get a really great argyle look. This is a fun technique, but it's one that's a little bit fiddly and I'm gonna give you as many tips and tricks as I have so that you can be successful in this really great technique. Not sure what I'm talking about? Take a look down here and let me show you what it is we're gonna do. As you look down here, you can see my sample swatch here. And isn't this just a beautiful argyle stitch? It looks like I put tons of work into this and did lots of color changes, but really it's the yarn that's the star. I used Red Heart with Love in the color Delightful, and this is a variegated yarn that has a transition from light gray to dark gray to light gray to the beautiful salmon flamingo color, and then back to light gray and dark gray and so on and so forth. As these color changes happen, and with the use of the moss stitch for this example, we have created this really great argyle look. And this is created by shifting over the color of the stitch every other row by one stitch. Meaning, as we look at this salmon color right here, and we go up a row and over one, we see the salmon color is right there as well. Go up a row and over one, the salmon color is right there, and so on and so forth. And that creates this really great diagonal right there for the argyle look. If you were to pull out some graph paper and plot out your color sequence, making each box a representation of the stitch in that color, and then skip a row and go up the next row, if you took that color and skipped a row, went up to the next row, and moved over one stitch, one box, and made it that color, that's essentially what we're doing with this technique. It's simply a matter of placing the colors where they need to be to maintain the stitch color sequence. It's not difficult, but as I mentioned earlier, it is fiddly. You will have to adjust your tension throughout the stitches. This is gonna be one of those examples in crochet where you are not going to strive to maintain the same gauge throughout the entire pattern you will strive to maintain the correct placement of the color of the stitch throughout the pattern. Meaning there will be times some of the stitches will have to be tighter, some of the stitches might have to be looser, and there might be times where you'll have to do an extra slip stitch within a stitch to eat up some of the yarn so that way when you get to the next stitch placement, it will be the correct color. Sounds a little confusing? Don't worry, we're gonna walk through this. It's really not as difficult as it sounds, but it is gonna take a little bit of patience. What do you need for this technique? Well, first, you will need some variegated yarn, but not all variegated yarns will work. There is a full list of Red Heart yarns that work for this particular patterning sequence in the description below. So in the description below, you will find a link to a full list of Red Heart yarns that work for this particular pattern sequence. While you're down there looking for that list, go ahead and smash that like button so that way everybody knows you like this video, okay? Along with the variegated yarn, you will need a couple sizes of crochet hooks. You will need an I, an H, and a G. Okay, those are some good starting points. You might actually need one stitch, one hook higher than an I, or one uh, hook lower than a G. It all depends on the yarn you're using and your gauge, or the way you are crocheting along, and how tight the stitches need to be in order for the color to lay in the right placement. There will be times that you might have to actually change hooks throughout the pattern to maintain the correct placement of the stitches. I know it's completely against everything you've been taught in crochet, but this is just a different technique and it's one that you will love once you master it. Once you have your hooks and the yarn that you are going to use for this technique, let's go ahead and jump in and I'm going to show you how to do this in some really easy steps. Okay, let's go. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm using Red Heart with Love in the color Delightful for this example. And this is a really great yarn. I love working with it and I will be using an H or a five millimeter crochet hook for today's demonstration. As I set this aside, we are going to get started. So here is the first step of the entire pattern pooling sequence. To begin planned pooling, we begin by chaining through a full sequence of our color repeat. 
As you take a look down here, you can see I have worked through one full sequence of the pattern repeat for this yarn. I did not start at any particular point as far as I didn't start between where one color starts at the next color because it really doesn't matter as long as I know that that is going to be my point of reference for when I count my repeat again and then work through my full repeat till I get to the end of my flamingo color where it begins my gray. So it would be right here again. This is a full stitch pattern repeat. Once I get that full stitch pattern repeat, I wanna make sure that the last color on my hook is the first color of my next section. So that would be gray. So I have gray left on my hook. Once I have that on my hook, I begin to work in the moss stitch pattern. So for the moss stitch pattern, we will do a single crochet in the fourth chain from hook. So one, two, three, four. I will place a single crochet right there and then chain one. Skip a chain, single crochet in the next chain, chain one. Skip a chain, single crochet in the next chain, chain one and this is my pattern repeat now what I'm doing right here is I will work this pattern repeat until I've worked through a full color sequence once again on this row okay now that does not mean I will use up all of my chains because I will not it takes more yarn to work a single crochet in a chain one than it does to create a chain. So I will not use up all of my chains. And at the end of my project, I just go back and undo the unused chains. But I do wanna make sure I get through one full color sequence for this particular row. Once I get through one full color sequence, that's where the magic starts to happen, okay? What needs to happen is we need to shift our color sequence over by one stitch. And in order to do that, we will either subtract one stitch or add one stitch repeat to this sequence. So right here you can see I'm left with the gray on my hook and I've worked through one full color sequence. So I can either subtract one repeat, so subtract this single crochet and this chain, or add one more single crochet and chain. I think I am going to try and subtract this one, so I'm gonna take out that single crochet and take out that chain, and I'm left at this point. And I continue on with row two, so I'm gonna chain two, turn my work, and I will continue on in the moss stitch, placing my stitches, my single crochets, into the chain one space. If I did not skip uh, subtract a stitch or add a stitch there at the end, my colors would begin to stack on each other and I would just get vertical lines of color, which is really cool and it's another way to do planned pooling, but that's not the look we're going for in this video. We want Argyle. So I am working in the moss stitch and I'm shifting over the colors by one stitch. And I will know by row three if this is starting to work, okay? So I'm going to get through here, and this one I will work all the way to the end through the color here, chain one. Make sure I do a single crochet in my turning chains there. And I'm to the end. So right here you can see things are starting to take shape. I chain two, turn my work, and here we go. I place my first stitch right here into the single, the single crochet into the chain one space, chain one. And if I'm looking at my starting row, that's a gray stitch. So in the stitch I'm getting ready to create, it needs to be gray, which it is, perfect. Chain one. I'm looking at a gray stitch, so this stitch needs to be gray. So I go ahead and create that stitch, perfect. Ah, we're starting to get off here. See how this is a gray stitch? And that means this stitch here needs to be gray, but if I were to complete it, I am gonna get charcoal there. You see how I start to get charcoal? Well, we don't want that. So what I would do is this is where I mentioned that we would mess around with our tension. So right here, I'm gonna come back here, and here at the beginning, I'm gonna tighten up my stitches and make them tighter. So I will make a tight single crochet, a chain one, a tight single crochet, a chain one, a tight single crochet, a chain one, 
And does that get me where I want to be? It's a little bit closer, huh? I can go ahead and do my charcoal right there. Well, see how my colors are starting to stack? And I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip down to this other row and tighten my stitches up from that point because I need to tighten them up a little bit more. So I'll come down here. I'm going to tighten up that chain one, 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 and tighten this one up. Chain two, turn, work my single right there, chain one. Here we go, I got my gray chain one. Oops, I need to make that a little bit more tight. So get my gray going on there. Chain one. My gray happened in right there. Chain one. Oh look, I got my gray where it needs to be. See how that works? And I can chain one. Now I'm where the charcoal needs to be. I'm right there. Chain one. And right here, this also needs to be charcoal. Chain one. I'm back to where this needs to be gray. Well, if I complete this, will I be a gray? Yes. Sweet. Continue on, making sure that all the colors are lining up the way I need them to on a diagonal basis. So this next one needs to be this flamingo color. So when I do my chain one, check it out, I'm getting my flamingo. Chain one. Flamingo, it's supposed to be a flamingo there as well, and a flamingo there as well, which is great. Chain one, flamingo there as well. Oh, I love it when it turns out, and flamingo there as well. Chain two, and turn. So as you can tell right there, after I completed my row three, I can tell if I'm on sequence, and it's great. And as I did in the example, you will have to adjust your tension throughout your entire project in order to maintain the color sequence because that is the most important part of creating this particular stitch pattern. It's not the consistency of the way the stitches are made. It is actually the consistency of where the colors are placed. Okay, so you need to um, adjust your gauge for the sake of color placement. So as I chain two and turn my work, I can continue on checking myself here. So I can see I'm going one row, or I skip that row, go one row below that. So I'm looking at gray, so I'm gonna make sure I'm doing gray in the next one. Chain one, do gray in the next one. Chain one, and this should be gray and I'm back to charcoal. So that means these are a little loose. So I just need to tighten those up a little. And the reason I say tighten them up is because I still need the gray to be there and I ran out of gray. So if I tighten them up, I use less yarn. So I will have the gray there when I need it. Does that make sense? So right here, when I need the gray, I'm getting it now because I tightened up those stitches. And I chain one, I'm back to the charcoal. Chain one, back to the charcoal chain one, and I'm back to my nice gray color. Can you see how I'm starting to get this diagonal look? It's starting to show up. So as I continue on here, I just want to make sure that my color sequence is landing where it needs to, and I will make adjustments to the stitch itself when necessary. So I can see right here is the flamingo, and I'm going to do flamingo, which is perfect. It means I'm right on cue. I'm looking at flamingo, so on and so forth. Does it make sense? And this works with all the different variegated yarns that are listed on that list that I put a link to in the description box below. So make sure you go to that link, and you'll find all of the Red Heart yarns that actually work out with this. So I'm gonna set this down and you can begin to see, as we look right here, flamingo, flamingo. So it would, be, it would start to go in the diagonal. See how that works out? Isn't that cool? 
So you can tell by the time you get to row three whether your tension is going to work with the sequence of your colors. You will have to adjust the tension of your stitches to make sure the color placement is where it needs to be. Now I'm gonna show you one of these other colors that way you can see a little um, more of an example of what's happening. For this example, I'm using Red Heart with Love in the color Lemon Drop, and it's so pretty. And you can see in the swatch I've already started up that the white diagonal stitches are really staying on point, correct? Everything is going exactly where I need them to be. Everything is lining up and it's great. But what you don't know is that there were different points in this stitch pattern that I had to tighten stitches and I actually had to loosen stitches and create extra stitches within the stitch so that way it ate up yarn because there was too much yarn and I wasn't be I wasn't able to loosen the stitch enough to make it look pretty so that I could be on the right color. So I want to show you how to do that. I'm at the end of my row here and I've got my chain two completed and I'm turning my work. And I can see here at the start that I need to have this great gray color, which is perfect. So I can start off with my gray chain one. But right here, I'm supposed to have this white. And when I do my work, I don't get the white. I'm still on that gray color. So I would rip out and I need to make this looser. So I can go ahead, make those nice and loose, create this stitch nice and extra loose, chain one loose. And now as I go into the stitch, am I getting my white? Yes, I'm getting my white right there. So that's what I mean about creating your stitch a little bit loose. So now it eats up yarn, okay? It eats up the yarn that I didn't need to have in play. And I can, can carry on in pattern. And right here, look at this. I'm at the yellow, but I have white on my, my next stitch. And that's not going to work. I need that to be yellow. So if I need that to be yellow, that means these white stitches need to be loose also. So I'm going to undo them and I will just create those stitches nice and loose to see how I can create the stitch. Well, shoot, I made those nice and loose, but I'm still getting the white there. So what is another way I can eat up the yarn without making my stitches so incredibly loose that they're going to look peculiar? I could actually do a slip stitch within the same stitch I'm doing my single crochet. So let me show you what I do. So I'm going to rip this out and because what needs to happen here is I need to eat up more of this white yarn than, than is eaten up by a typical pattern stitch. So what I'm going to do is I will go into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, go into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. It's almost like I'm beginning to do like a popcorn stitch. And then I yarn over and draw through all of those stitches, okay? Once I do that, check it out, I do my chain one, and lo and behold, I have yellow exactly where I need the yellow, and you can't tell that that stitch has extra yarn overs in it. Does that make sense? So that's how you can eat up extra yarn to make sure your color placement stays on point because that is the most important part. If you take anything away from this video, you want to make sure that you sacrifice the consistency of your stitches, the stitch gauge, to the actual stitch placement. Now right here, you can see I'm getting yellow and white sort of in that stitch. If it were me, I think if I were making this for my own project, I would go back here, I would tighten up this stitch so that I get more on point of yellow. I like to just have the plain yellow. There we go, that's pretty. Chain one and carry on. You see how I'm maintaining the stitch pattern? And it's all because of skipping, or I shouldn't say skipping, it's all because we subtracted or added one extra stitch when we went through our stitch color multiple, our stitch color sequence. By shifting that color just by one stitch, that's what allows our colors to shift by one stitch every other row. It's so cool and it's such a really great technique. If you can finish um, off with this, I would continue and I would get some really great argyle. It's so fun. 
because I want you to see that it's not something that's gonna be just right off the bat, you're gonna get this. If you do, congratulations, you're extremely lucky. But it is gonna be something you're gonna to have to work out a little bit. You will have to do some extra swatches, play around with your hook size and the yarn you're using. I've done the same thing, and I wanna show you some of the examples of different swatches I've done, because oh my gosh, have I been doing swatches. Let's put aside what I've been doing right here, which I love, and first, let me bring in an entire swatch family made up of yarn from one full skein. So right here, I have one full skein of Red Heart Super Saver in the colorway antique. And you can see that I have done so many swatches with this. So I'm gonna set that swatch aside first. So I tried many different ways to get my color sequence to work out. So this was the first one I did. And you can see down here, I started off with my beginning chain. I worked through one full color sequence and then continued on. And I didn't fully see that I was just over by one stitch here at the bottom. You can see that I'm actually over by two stitches. But I was like, all right, I can kind of see where it's starting to work out though. I wonder if it will continue to work out. So I kept going and I kept going. Does it work out? Yeah. It does work out by shifting over two stitches, but my argyle is a little bit more squatty. See how squatty it is? And then up here, as I shifted my tension a little bit and I started to move over just one stitch, see how there's the white one? I go up and over one, up and over one. This is where I started to get a more fully formed argyle. So I was like, all right, this is really starting to take shape. I can see what's happening here and I can see how shifting over just by one stitch really does make a difference. So I cut it off, I set it aside, and I pulled out another one. And I'm like, okay, well, what if I use a bigger hook? What, what's gonna happen there? So I used a bigger hook, I did my chaining, and I continued on. And you can see right here, right off the bat, that I am not getting in color sequence at all, right? Because here is my third, so it would be this row right here. And I should have white in that stitch and there is no white to be seen. So these stitches are too big because the white I need to be there is all the way over here. So all of these stitches need to be tightened up in order to land in the right place. So as I continued on with this, am I getting argyle? Yeah, somewhat. I can see somewhat of an argyle going on, but it's not the really pretty argyle that we're going for, right? So I was like, all right, well, if I'm gonna tighten it up, what if I also change it up and instead of starting off with a beginning chain working through the full color sequence, why not start off with a standing single crochet in a scrap yarns chain? What if I were to do a border around something and I just start off with that border color yarn and then work my first row into that? So let's try that. So I set this aside and I pulled this one in. So here I have scrap yarn. This is just Red Heart with Love yarn. And I just chained a whole bunch of chains. And then what I did, let's flip it around this way, is right here, I started with a standing single crochet instead of chain twos. And then I started working across. And I tried to maintain a sequence, but again, you can tell simply right here by row three, that stitch right there should be moved over by one and I'm a little bit short. So if I had made it so that I loosened them up a little bit, no. So if I had so if I had made it where these here were tighter coming into this way so it could come over, it would have landed perfectly. But having said that, am I still getting argyle? Yeah. You can see I'm getting argyle. It's just not as pronounced. It's a little bit more muddied, right? I'm getting a little bit more muddied. So it's like, all right, well that works but obviously I'm not landing in the right spot, so I'd have to adjust for gauge. So I set this one aside. I wasn't joking when I said you have to swatch. And here's where I am now. So this is all I have left of my yarn, of that full skein. I went down a hook size, so I went down to a four millimeter hook. And you can see, I started off with the chains, I went through the full color sequence, and as I started working back, all of a sudden my colors are working perfectly diagonal. They're perfectly one stitch off from each other. And I'm like, hallelujah, this one's going to work out. It's a little bit tighter fabric than I wanted, but that's what I need in order for my stitches to work out with this particular yarn. 
Well, you have to go through a full skein of yarn in order to find the right balance or the right stitch uh, gauge that you need for your yarn. No, I could have ripped out all of these. It didn't have to be that I kept them in play, but I kept them so that way I could show you how that worked. So you will have to do some swatching in order to play around with your hook size. Now, as I was showing you with the other yarn where I tighten stitches and loosen stitches, you could also, if you find that one particular row you need to have your stitches tighter, one particular row you need to have your stitches looser, you could change hooks throughout the entire pattern. There is no rule saying you cannot do that. So that's something you can do. I wanna show you another couple swatches here to show you that sometimes you might work with a yarn that you think isn't gonna work because your initial work through doesn't add up and you try it again and you're like, oh, there it is. So this right here, this is Red Heart Super Saver called Bright Mix. And this was my first swatch. And I worked through one full color repeat. Let's see, one full color repeat. And I started working. And I have a nice big hook that I was using here. And I'm just playing around going back and forth. And there is no real rhyme or reason happening here, right? This looks like just kind of a variegated mess. I'm not getting argyle. But I'm like, you know, I know this can be done. I know this can be done with this yarn. So I'm going to I'm gonna retry it. So I put this aside. It's another swatch set aside. And I started a new one. And this one, check it out. It is starting to work out, correct? And is it completely just one stitch off each time? Sure is. I'm starting to really get a pattern going here. There's a couple points where maybe I'm a couple stitches off, so it's a little bit more muddied, but I'm actually getting Argyle. Check that out. Isn't that cool? So don't give up. If you have a yarn on the list of yarns that has been proven that they work, but it's just not working for you for some reason, don't give up. This is one of those things, perseverance and patience is gonna be your friend. You can absolutely do this. And the last thing I wanna show you is one of my favorite ones um, because it's just so pretty. So this uses Red Heart Super Saver in the color variegation called Zebra. And gosh, did I love this. It's so pretty. And this is an example of what you can get even though the stitches are off a little bit. So you can see here that I'm not getting a fully straight diagonal. It's a little muddied right here, but I'm still getting some nice argyle happening. My diamonds are a little bit more squished and I think it's because I'm not completely straight across but I'm getting the gist of the fabric I want. I love this one. I think this one is so pretty. Get yourself some Red Heart Super Saver in Zebra. That's what I have left for this. I plan on continuing on with that one. <sighs> now, hopefully you have learned a little bit about plant pooling and you're ready to go and grab some variegated yarn and several different hook sizes and give this a try. Just remember, it is gonna take a little bit of patience. It is gonna require you to adjust your tension throughout the project, so that way you can make the color placement be the most important factor for your project, okay? If you do that, you will have great success. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll come back here for more right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel where you will find everything you need for knitting and crochet. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye. I can't wait to do some more. Looking for more Marley Bird? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Click right down there and you will find more videos just like this teaching you how to knit or crochet, all brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. Go ahead, click away. Don't be shy. Don't forget to smash that like button.